Don't you love stupid arguments? I have one. Which of these is better? They're the same picture. For decades, gamers have been arguing over which console is the best. In prior generations, each console had their own set of features and games that made them stand out. But in recent years, it's getting harder to tell them apart. Although Nintendo likes to do their own thing, Sony and Microsoft spent the last two decades making very similar consoles to each other. They get the same games with nearly the same performance, you get the same features, and you're stuck paying for online play. The only deciding factor between buying a new console was whether you want high quality first party exclusives or you want Game Pass. But what if you didn't have to choose? Might I introduce you to some PC gaming? With Sony and Microsoft releasing their games for PC, you get the best of both worlds, and you don't need to pay for online play. You have access to nearly all third party games alongside a ton of exclusives. The PC has been my main platform for decades, and I've spent way too much money building my backlog for it. But I can see why it isn't appealing to some. I've been working with computers for nearly my entire life, so I'm used to all the quirks that come my way. But for others, it's too much of a hassle. For most people, they want to veg on the couch, turn on the TV, and play some games. They don't want to spend their free time searching through Google search to fix random problems because the subreddit that had the answer shut down. Fortunately, Valve came in to make PC gaming more accessible. In 2014, Valve partnered with numerous PC manufacturers to build a line of Steam machines, or small form factor gaming PCs pre-installed with SteamOS. Valve was scared of Microsoft killing their business, so they created their own Linux distro in response. However, not many developers wanted to deal with the near infinite amount of software configurations that would break their games, so the Steam Machine initiative never took off. But it did lead to many new developments that benefited PC gamers in the long run. Valve would introduce Big Picture Mode, which allows players to run PC games through a console-like interface. Although the Steam controller might have scared people away with its weird layout, its customization options were expanded to other controllers through Steam input. Valve even solved the Linux compatibility issue with Proton, which allows many Windows games to run seamlessly on the OS. All these developments would culminate in the ultimate console-like PC experience, the Steam Deck. Sure, it might be a handheld, but you can still connect it to a TV and use a controller to play games. The new OS is easily accessible with a controller, while also allowing as much control of the hardware as a typical PC. Despite it running Linux, nearly all games I've installed in it run perfectly fine, even games that aren't labeled as compatible. If you're looking to buy a PC with a console-like experience out of the box, the Steam Deck is a great option. Just keep your expectations in check. Since it's a handheld, the specs are more closely related to the Switch than to the big boys. Although you'll have no issues with indie games or pre 8th gen titles, anything newer might give you issues. Many modern AAA games struggle to run at a decent frame rate on the lowest settings, and this is at 800p. If you're running these games on a TV, you either need to play at low frame rates or deal with a blurry image. What if we could take the Steam Deck experience and move it to a more powerful hardware? What if we build our own machine? A Steam Machine, if you will. Indeed, you can build yourself a Steam Machine in 2023. And now it's actually awesome! By using Steam OS, you can use a gaming PC like a game console without ever needing to connect a keyboard and mouse. Outside of some initial tinkering, of course. Although SteamOS might seem bare bones compared to other console interfaces, we can expand its functionality by doing some extra tinkering. Unfortunately, the new SteamOS is only compatible with the Steam Deck, and the older version is years out of date. Valve said they release a version for other hardware soon, but in Valve time, we'll be waiting a while. Or it'll come out as soon as I release this video, knowing my luck. Although there are unofficial methods of installing SteamOS to other hardware, like with Hollow ISO, these installers haven't been updated in months. That's why I'm going with Chimera OS with this build. It gives you the same Steam Deck interface while having a dedicated team keeping everything updated. Big shoutouts to those guys for helping me out with any issues I face with this project. Now there are drawbacks with using Chimera OS, and with Linux in general. Although Proton made tons of Steam games compatible with Linux, there are still games that won't work, particularly those that rely on an anti-cheat service. Also, you lose access to native Game Pass. But then again, look at this collection. Do you really think I need Game Pass? But there are also some sacrifices you need to make that might be a deal breaker for some. No HDR, and no ray tracing. I don't mind giving these up, as they take away performance for little benefit in graphical fidelity. But if you do care, you're better off sticking with Windows. You can boot directly into big picture mode, or use other softwares such as Launchbox and Play Night. But if you want to go more in depth with the machine, you're forced to use a keyboard and mouse. Hopefully this changes in the future, but to keep in the spirit of this challenge, and sticking with Chimera. The benefit of PC gaming is you can go as crazy with the hardware as you want. 
But for my machine, I'm looking to build something more modest. I still want something that can play most games at 4K60, but I want something that's somewhat affordable. That's why I decided to go with a Ryzen 7 600X and a Radeon 6700 XT. I'm definitely sure the graphics card will be obsolete by the time this video comes out, but seeing how lackluster new GPUs have been, I don't think I'm missing much. I could have saved some money if I went with the Ryzen 5000 line, but I want to keep temperatures low because I'm air cooling this thing. Hey, if it's good enough for consoles, then it should be no problem here. This PC will be stored in my media case with the rest of my consoles, which means I'm building my first small form factor gaming PC. There are tons of options for small cases nowadays, like the Height Revolt 3. You can fit a full-size graphics card in AIO, and it also includes a 700 watt power supply, all for the same price that I pay for the power supply alone. Best of all, this case has a handle, and we all know the best consoles have handles on them. However, it might be too long for my media case, and I don't need another space hog like the PS5, so instead I went with the Silverstone SG-13. It might not have a handle, but it looks more like a GameCube, so it wins out in the end. Alongside an ITX motherboard, I also needed some storage. SSDs and RAM sticks are the only components that are cheap nowadays, so I got myself a 2TB M2 drive with 32GB of RAM. Overall, if you include tax, I spent about $1,400 on this console. Hey! Oh, right, I should add a controller to the total, so make that $1,500. I will admit, this is a bit high for a mid-range PC. I could have saved some money if I went with older hardware, maybe components that better match the power of the big two. I would have also saved some money if I stuck with a standard ATX build or cut back in the storage, but I'm actually happy with the choices I made. The specs should serve my needs, and by using more modern components, I have some flexibility when it comes to upgrading the future. Besides, if you take into account how much it costs for both consoles alongside paying for their online services for 5 plus years, it adds up to the same amount. I tell myself I'm just spending too much money on this. There's no turning back now, let's build this thing! Wait, wait, hold on here. Initially, I planned to have this part recorded live, but as it turns out, communication doesn't come naturally to me. But here's a quick recap of my experience. In the beginning, everything appeared fine, until I discovered my CPU fan wouldn't fit in the motherboard. I had to replace it with an Actua Low Profile fan, which fits perfectly. It's tiny, but let's hope it keeps things cool. Once the CPU fans were installed, everything else went smoothly. I installed everything on the motherboard, tested it, and saw that it posted, so I went ahead with building the rest of the PC. Unfortunately, my graphics card got lost in the mail, but I was able to do everything else before it arrived. I checked to make sure all components were reading properly, I updated the BIOS, and everything worked without a hitch. Then the graphics card arrived, and I hit another snag. Although I made sure the graphics card was short enough to fit in the case, it was a little on the chunky side and I had trouble getting it in. I initially had a 140mm fan inserted in the front, but it turned out the GPU was too long for it to fit alongside it, so I had to replace it with a 120mm fan. With that fixed, I tried again, only for the graphics card to get stuck. One of the brackets on the case bent backwards, preventing me from sliding the card into place. Since I couldn't get the card out, my only resort was to cut the bracket off with the wire cutters, and then it slid in. It might have been scratched, but it should still work. Once the GPU was inserted, I rebooted the machine and, what do you know, the console still works! The cable management looks like the monsters from any tech YouTuber's nightmares, but it's working, so I'm not gonna mess with it anymore. Now that the PC was finally built, it was time to install Chimera OS, which installed without problems. And then I faced a ton of problems. All right, and I got a controller paired up. It now it doesn't want to work. Why does it not want to work? I went to install and play some games, and after a few minutes, the computer would crash. Every. Single. Time. I initially panicked, thinking I ruined a component, but then I remembered a similar issue when I built my current PC, where it turned out one of the RAM sticks went bad. I ran Memtest 86, and what do you know? Everything was failing! G-Skill screwed me once again! So I rushed to Best Buy to buy some Corsair RAM sticks. I'll be honest, this might have been my fault, as perhaps I overclocked the RAM too much. I bought RAM rated at 6400 MHz, but the motherboard advertises itself to only handle up to 5200 MHz. Although I was able to overclock once I updated the BIOS, maybe it couldn't actually handle it. To prevent another incident, I downgraded to 5600 MHz speeds, and now everything works fine. After all that hardship, my Steam machine was ready to go. I went to install some games, run some benchmarks, and OH MY GOD! The CPU is baking in my small PC. I kind of expected this because it's a tiny PC which always runs hot, but the Noctua fan can handle cooling at high loads. Even though Ryzen 7000 CPU should run fine at these temperatures, I wanted to play it safe. With Precision Boost Override, 
I can limit how much power goes through the CPU. It can even throttle the CPU once it reaches a certain temperature. It was initially set with 480 watts running through it, which is just insane for this PC. So I lowered it to 100 watts and set an 80 degrees Celsius limit. Once everything was set up, temperatures were finally at comfortable levels, all without much of a dip in performance. In hindsight, I should have gone with a 9X variant, but this should still work. Also, since I went with an SFX power supply, I may have gotten away with a bigger CPU cooler, but I would need to completely disassemble the PC to replace it, so it's fine the way it is. Finally, our Steam machine is complete. If all you care about is playing Steam games, you're done! Install some games and you're good to go! But I want to make my console even more console-like. And to do this, I need to go to desktop mode to install some extra software. I know Linux might be too scary for some, in fact, Chimera makes it even more difficult as many core features are locked off. If you're a serious Linux user, I wouldn't recommend this distro. But at least for the casual crowd, you don't need to touch the terminal for this. You can install all the software you need from the store app. Want to use Party Chat while playing games? Install Discord, and then add it to Steam. Want to listen to music? Install Spotify. Want to browse the web? Or better yet, want to use some streaming services? Install your favorite browser and then add an instance for every website you want to go to. Make sure you type in the proper launch properties with the website you want to access, and also make sure you're zooming in a bit so you can actually see everything on screen. You can even install games from other launchers. Heroic Game Launcher allows you to install games from Epic Game Store and GOG, and it can even add those games directly to Steam. For other launchers, you can either use Lutris or to run the launchers using Proton. I've had some mixed results with this, but I was able to install Battle.net and play some Diablo, so you should be good. As a bonus, let's add some emulators. To install Emu Deck, you'll need to access the terminal and unlock the root folder, but after a few commands, everything should work fine. If you have a Steam Deck with an SD card set up for emulators, you can connect the SD card to your PC and import everything over, and it should work with no issues. Keep in mind that Emu Deck was made for Steam Deck, so the default settings of each emulator were set up with its specs in consideration. To make the best use of your hardware, you'll need to go into each emulator and change the settings to whatever you wish. Also, from the console UI, you'll need to go into the properties of each game and make sure the resolution is set to native for every single game. I know SteamOS was designed with the Steam Deck in mind, so it's expected to run games at 800p natively, but for our console, this is a pain to set up. Wouldn't it be better if there was a setting to set the resolution to native for all games? Fortunately, that's the only gripe I have with SteamOS, as everything else works great. I played through a bunch of games, and outside of adding some launch options, most games ran fine. If you're unsure if a game will work, check out ProtonDB. You can see how well certain games run, and it can provide you with methods on how to get games working. Looking at ProtonDB scores, most of my giant game libraries should work fine. The only issue you might face is when you're dealing with anti-cheat services. Fortunately for Easy Anti-Cheat, there's a plugin you can install that allows some of these games to work. In fact, most anti-cheat services support Linux if developers allow it. But for some reason, they don't. Hopefully this changes, but personally I don't play many multiplayer games anymore, so I'm fine with this being a single player machine. In terms of the hardware, I'm satisfied with the performance. It might sound like a jet engine, but at least it's quieter than a 360. I'm able to run most games at 4K at 60 frames per second, but for AAA titles, you might need to play around the settings. The Last of Us Part 1 retained a steady 50 to 60 frames per second at 4K by playing at high settings, with FSR set to performance. Even with an update that apparently fixed many of the issues with this port, I still see textures refusing to load, and overall this port looks weird to me. At least Spider-Man runs better, where I can get 100 frames per second at 4K with FSR, smaller titles like Hi-Fi Rush will run fine, but I still ran into issues with Cyberpunk. For these cases, you'll want to lower the resolution to 1440p. If you're looking to emulate, you'll have no problem here. It can play many games on Dolphin at 4K, though I ran into this issue with Rogue Squadron 2. PCSX2 games gave me better luck, as well as all the other consoles I tried. Running apps is also a breeze. Once you've added them to Steam, you just need to set up the controls and you're good to go. There's numerous pre-made layouts to use, so pick one that works best for you. Once set up, it works as well as running a browser on other consoles. You can even run these apps alongside games if you go back to the home menu. You can listen to music on Spotify while playing a game, or you can talk to friends on Discord while playing online. When you're done, you can explore the internet, or you can relax with some Netflix, YouTube, or whatever streaming services that's being destroyed right now. Now, if you really want to play games that don't run on Linux, you can play games on the cloud using Game Pass or GeForce Now, but that would be cheating. Overall, I was able to do anything the PS5 and Xbox Series consoles can do with my Steam machine. I could run a bunch of different apps and play games at similar performance. 
at about three times the cost of a console. Look, there's no going around this. PC hardware is crazy expensive right now. GPU prices are through the roof, and even entry-level cards cost as much as a game console nowadays. You can definitely build a PC for much less than I paid for if you're willing to use older parts or gamble with used parts. If you want to get even more lazy, find yourself a cheap gaming laptop. The only problem is the limited hardware compatibility. Only AMD graphics cards will work with Chimera OS. If Nvidia and Intel bother to write decent drivers for Linux, we'll be in business. But who knows if that'll ever happen. Perhaps it'll be sooner than you think. With the success of the Steam Deck, more companies are building their own handhelds to compete. Each of these handhelds are building their own UIs that work best with controllers. And the only logical step from here is to build console-like PCs with these same interfaces. It would make it easier for people to play PC games on the TV without needing to switch to a keyboard and mouse all the time. With this PCI built, once you're done with the setup, you can control everything with a controller, making it the most accessible gaming PC around. It might be a bit pricey, but it comes with a ton of benefits. You can control how powerful you want the console to be, whether you go for something cheap or make the best console possible. You'll carry all of your games with you for decades, while you're at the mercy of console manufacturers when it comes to backwards compatibility. Best of all, you don't need to pay for any extra subscriptions to play your games online. With the thousands of PC games I own, this will be the perfect way for me to finally experience them. Oh, who am I kidding? The Steam sale is only going to make things worse.